Can you run a 100 mile ultra marathon with the Apple Watch Ultra 2? Well, I set out and I ran a race to try to figure that question out and it turns out the short answer is yes and the long answer is it's kind of complicated. Ever since the Apple Watch Ultra was announced about a year ago, I've always had sort of a pet peeve with this watch because it's advertised as Ultra and it's got better battery life, a rugged build, and in Apple's marketing videos and all of their documentation, it shows people running ultra marathons with this watch. However, if you go through Apple's specs, about the Apple Watch Ultra 2, you'll find some limiting factors when it comes to the battery life of this watch. So I wanted to do my own testing and the opportunity arose about a week ago when I signed up for a 100 mile long ultra marathon. I attempted to run the Midstate Massive 100 mile long ultra marathon here in Massachusetts last weekend with the Apple Watch Ultra 2 on my wrist and on my other wrist, I also had the Garmin Foreigner 965. And in this video today, I'm gonna share my thoughts on the battery life of this watch because it's actually pretty surprising. I'll share the settings I used for this race, the results I got, and we'll talk about some of the usability as well. And as a quick spoiler, I did not finish this race. It was brutal. The weather was pretty bad. And if you want to see the whole story about this race, I'll link the vlog video I posted. It's sort of a race recap up here, or you can go check it out on my channel. However, I was out there for over 16 hours. And during that duration of time, I learned a lot about this watch, so I still wanted to make this video to share my thoughts on it. Let's get to the point of this video and sort of the TLDR. Uh, how much battery life did I lose during that 16 hours out on the trail with the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the Garmin Foreigner 965? Well, I had both of these watches charged to 100% before I left my house. Both were maxed out and connected to their chargers, and before I left, I actually turned both of these watches off so I wouldn't lose any battery life from the time I left my house to the one hour car drive before I started the race. When I arrived at the starting line, I turned both watches on about 10 minutes before the race started. After starting the race and spending 16 hours running before I dropped out of the race, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 had 39% of its battery remaining at the time I stopped the activity. And the Garmin Foreigner 965 had 62% left. So quite a bit more on the Garmin Foreigner 965, but I was pretty surprised by the 39% left on the Apple Watch Ultra 2. When you look at Apple's website in the spec sheet for the Apple Watch Ultra 2, you'll notice a few things when it comes to battery life. In terms of everyday smartwatch mode, you can get about three days or 36 hours. And if you drop into that super low power mode, you can get between 60 and 72 hours. If you do some digging and read the fine print about low power mode, you will see that Apple expects about 17 hours in a GPS activity if you have low power mode turned on. And Apple claims if you need more battery life than that 17 hours, you can drop into reduced accuracy GPS and heart rate mode, which reduces how many times the sensors are sampled in order to get a GPS position and your heart rate to maximize your battery life. However, in my testing, that reduced accuracy mode is kind of all over the place and you can check out one of my recent videos for a really weird GPS track that I recorded. So for for this specific activity, I did not want to use that reduced accuracy mode because I was on a trail the entire time and I wanted the best representation of that trail during this race. That brings me to the settings that I used at this specific race because I made a number of tweaks to the settings that turned out to be pretty effective in maximizing my battery life without using that reduced accuracy mode. So here we've got the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and one thing to note right off the bat is that this watch is essentially brand new. It's only like three weeks old, so its battery health is really good. If you have a watch that's a couple of years older, the battery does degrade over time, so you'll get less and less battery life in an activity. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. Okay, so the first setting that you should enable if you wanna maximize your battery life is the most obvious. And that's when you go into your quick control menu here, you dive into your battery option here, and then you wanna enable low power mode. Low power mode essentially turns off some of the communications with your phone. It dials back how often Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are enabled in order to check on notifications and things like that. And it also does some other things like turn off some of the sensors within the watch, like turning off that double tap mode that's on the new Apple Watch Ultra 2 and Series 9. Low power mode is a no brainer. Definitely turn this on if you're doing anything that's a longer type of activity. Low power mode is a great first step to maximize your battery life, but I also did a few other things at this particular race. Now I'm gonna dive into display and brightness options. And as you can see here, 
I have the brightness set to its lowest value. And again, in an activity, in a run, in especially for a trail run, and in my case, in the rain, and it was kind of dark out the entire day, there is no need to have your brightness maxed out. All that does is kill your battery life. In my case, I had it set to its lowest setting, minimum brightness, it does still boost up pretty bright because it's automatic and you can't disable the auto brightness setting, but turning it to its lowest value does help preserve a little bit more battery life. Diving back to my settings here, I wanna show you a couple of other things I did to maximize battery life. First, if we dive into cellular, you can see that I've removed my cellular plan from this watch, so there's no cellular option at all, so cellular is turned off, and I think that does have a pretty significant hit in battery life if you do have a cellular plan turned on in enabled. If we dive into my Wi-Fi options here, you can see I have Wi-Fi turned off entirely. And of course, out on a trail run, you don't really need Wi-Fi, so I had this disabled. And on top of disabling Wi-Fi, I also disabled my Bluetooth connection entirely. And there are, there are some negative things that come along with disabling Bluetooth, like now I can't talk to your phone at all, so if you get a notification, it won't pop up in your watch. And we will talk about that in a minute, but I did this because like I said, I was trying to squeeze the most battery life out of this watch without sacrificing GPS or heart rate accuracy. The final thing to maximize battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 that I did during this race was using the native workout app, the Apple Workout app. And I love third-party apps. I really like Workout Doors. I like iSmooth Run, and I've got videos about those apps I'll link up here. But for the sake of battery life, I wanted to give the watch the best chance it had. And I think by using the optimized workout app that's developed by Apple, that's the best way to go for battery life. Now, I did mention that I had two watches during this run. So I quickly wanted to talk about the Garmin Foreigner 965 that I had on my other wrist and its settings. So this watch, I made similar adjustments to. I had this set to its lowest brightness and lowest timeout settings on the display. I had it set to its least accuracy in GPS only mode, which still is pretty accurate. It's just not using multiband mode like on the Apple Watch Ultra 2. I also had Wi-Fi turned off on this watch. I had Bluetooth turned on, however, because I still wanted to get notifications from my phone to my Garmin, and this just gets more battery life in an activity anyways, so I didn't worry about that. Get all that. Now that we've talked about the settings of the watches, let's dive back into the results I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The battery life remaining. On the Apple Watch Ultra 2, we had 39% left after 16 hours of running. And if we do some simple math on that, that works out to about 3.8% of battery loss per hour. So if we take that 3.8% battery loss per hour and we do some multiplication, you could expect between 26 and 27 hours of use in an activity with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. And I think 26 or 27 hours is enough battery life for a lot of people to run a 100 mile long ultra marathon. Of course, you would have to be sort of mid pack, front of the pack type of pace. If you're back of the pack running a 32 to 38 hour 100 miler, this won't work for you. You'll have to charge it midway, but for a lot of people, this might fit the bill. On the other hand, if we go back to the Garmin Foreigner 965, this watch had 62% left on its battery, which is considerably more than the Apple Watch Ultra 2. That means this watch only lost 2.4% of its battery per hour. And if we do some math on that, it means you could expect between 41 and 42 hours of use in a running activity. And I gotta say, that's probably enough for just about anybody in the sport to complete their 100 mile long ultra marathon. And on the topic of GPS accuracy, I'll throw up the GPS track on the screen here now. And as you can see, I've got the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the Garmin Foreigner 965 layered on top of each other and they both look pretty similar. Both tracks do follow the course pretty well. Like I said, the weather was pretty bad, so there is some GPS drift here and there. This was very challenging conditions for GPS accuracy on both these watches, but both did a pretty solid job. Even though the Garmin was still in its least accuracy setting, it did a pretty good job here. Now that I've laid all of this data out there, let's reel it back in and talk about my final thoughts and conclusions after running an ultra marathon with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Do I recommend buying one of these if you're a 100 mile athlete? Uh, maybe. The one factor that I did not mention so far is usability. And like I said, when I went through the settings, I disabled Bluetooth, I had Wi-Fi turned off, no cellular connection. So this watch had no communications with my phone and it couldn't really do anything except for show me my stats for my run. So I could see my overall elapsed time, my distance, my running power, elevation gain, and all the data from the specific run, but nothing else. There was no other context. Like I couldn't view a map, I couldn't change my music settings, 
settings or anything like that for my watch because I broke all the connections from the Apple Watch Ultra 2 to my phone for the sake of battery life. Now moving back over to the Garmin Foreigner 965 here, I still had some options when it comes to functionality during the run. First of all, I had full offline mapping on the Garmin Foreigner 965 because it has offline mapping downloaded to the storage of the watch. I don't need a cellular connection. I don't need Wi-Fi. It's stored internally to the watch and I can simply scroll to a data page with a map on it to find my way. And let me tell you, during this race, I used that a lot because this course is really hard to navigate. And like I said, when we went through the settings on the Foreigner 965, I also still had Bluetooth enabled on this watch because Bluetooth doesn't appear to be a big battery draw for the Garmin. I don't think they have like a constant connection. So I just left it on and it really didn't have a big impact on battery life. And because I had it on, I still got phone notifications when my wife was texting me or when the app from the race organization was sending me notifications, I would still get that on my watch. And having those features with offline mapping and navigation, music controls and phone notifications showing up on my watch were all very useful features to have in this particular race. Now, could I have enabled Bluetooth on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and gotten similar battery life? Maybe. We'll have to wait till my next race in order to find out. But for now, I do think it's an interesting option. If you are somebody who participates in like one or two ultras a year, or you're running 50Ks, 50 milers, something like that, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is fine. Like it'll it'll definitely make it for a 50 miler. Even a uh, 100K probably is fine for this watch. But once you tread into that 100 mile long ultra marathon territory, that's where things get a little bit foggy with the Apple Watch Ultra and Ultra 2 and where you do need to make some sacrifices in order to maximize your battery life. With all that said, we've reached the end of this short, not probably not so short video. I always think they're gonna be short, but they're never short. I apologize for how dense this video was with data and numbers, but it's a video I really wanted to share with you because I've been curious about this myself, and it turns out it's, it's kind of interesting if you tweak some of the settings. If you're an ultra running nerd like me and you found this video helpful or fun, please consider going down and giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. If you're planning on picking up the Apple Watch Ultra 2 or even the Garmin Foreigner 965, I'll have links in the description down below that do help support this channel, but they cost nothing extra to you, so you might as well use them. And I think that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Bye.